Birthdays or anniversaries since we saw each other last. Well, we must be gone. When they start, it'll be like the rain. It just keeps coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody is in the spring. Most everybody. Well, if there's no birthdays or anniversaries, uh, I'll, I'll close our Sunday school and open our worship service. <laughs> Worship you in truth and in spirit and, and sing songs of praise to thy holy name, Lord. You're, you're so good to us, Father. We thank you for your love and your mercy. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father, we, for those who maybe don't know you, Father, we, we ask you, Father, to continue to be long suffering and put them in front of us, Father, that we can talk to them about what you
Still, still in the number nine.
and look forward to that. That's always a blessing. Invite people to come and be with us and always have a good time doing that. Get together like that. On January the 30th, I think it is anyway, the 29th or the 30th, uh, whatever, the last Sunday in January, it's coming up. So it's a fifth Sunday, so we'll have communion that Sunday. And uh, look forward to that, doing that. So that, uh, we do that to remember what the Lord's really done for us. I know we remember every day what he's done for us, but we set aside that time to, to just to worship him a little extra and, and praise him and thank him for what he's done for us. And uh, I reckon that's everything. That's I've got something standing with the paper for. Uh, Long night. Long night.
Here you go. Right. 
Listen, we need to have fellowship one with another because we can encourage one another. We can lift each other up to the Lord in prayer. Listen, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Do you not think that fellowship is important? I want you to know this morning, for those that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and they never darken the doors of the church, they're missing a whole lot of the peace and the joy and the satisfaction that they can have every single day in their life. Listen, I want you to know, praise God, we have a desire deep down inside us to have fellowship one with another and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe it's built in, Steve. It's there. Some of them stifle it. Some of them push it back. Right. And they won't allow that conscience on, to cause them to get up Amen. off of their seat and come to church. They may have a hangnail, or they may have a sore toe, and they may have a little headache, and they'll let that keep them from coming to the house of God. I want to tell you they're missing the fellowship that's right. that's, that there is a desire for. Yeah. Deep down inside of myself, I was going to read. I almost forgot what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> Peter, down through these verses, Peter tells us some things that we ought to have in order to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to have those things in order to have fellowship with other Christians, but primarily and foremost, we ought to have those things to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen in verses 5 and 6. He tells us to be submitted. Be submitted to God. You know what? There's a lot of hard-headed Christians. Right. There's a lot of people out there that will not submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. There's a whole lot of people out there that when the Lord gets a hold of them and he begins to squeeze that old heart and he wants them to get in, get in right with him yeah. and he wants them to get where they ought to be. You know what? They'll stifle that spirit. Yeah. They'll hold that back and they won't get up and go do what they know that they're supposed to be doing. Right. Peter said, be submitted. Right. Be the servant of God. Be willing to serve God. Right. In verses 5 and 6, he said, be submitted. In verse 7, he says, be sure. Be sure. That word sure is not in there, but there's a meaning for it. Casting. That word casting is not the same word that we use to cast our fishing line out in the water. When we throw that fishing line out in the water, we're going to reel it back in. When we cast something out like that, we're going to pull it back. That's not the verb that it's talking about. There's, I read one of the commentaries said this verb means the same thing as conclusive. Be sure that one time will do it. I'm glad to know, praise God, one time. Edie, one time is all that we had to be saved. Right. One time is all that we had to be surrendered to Almighty God and allow Him to come into our heart and set up a boat in our heart and be indwelt with the Holy Ghost. One time, praise God, I'm glad. I don't have to be saved over and over and over. I'm glad, praise God. Man. I might have to be reconciled a few times. I don't have to be saved but one time. That's right. My God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, praise God. And that one time is all I have to be saved. Listen, we have to be conclusive. We have to be sure. And in verse, be serious. In verse 8 and 9 it says, be sober. Be serious. Yes. I'm, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of them out there in the world today. There's a lot of people out there in the world today that profess to be Christians, but they're playing church. They're yeah. playing church. Yeah. They're not yeah. serious about serving God. They're not serious about turning their life yeah. over to God. Yeah. They're not serious about submitting yeah. to God. They're not ser serious about being sure that their salvation is real. They're not serious. I tell you today, God expects us to be serious yeah. when, we're out, when we're serving Him. Yeah. We ought to be serious when we go out in the world, Brother Joe, to take the Word of God. We ought to be yeah. serious when we go out in the world, Brother Steve, to lift up right. the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. to the lost and dying world. Because I'm going to tell you, we come in contact with them every yeah. single day. And listen, be, be serious and then see God work. In verse 10, then there, listen to what it says. But the, but the God of all grace, who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a little while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Whoa, what a God. Watch God work. 
I tell you, I see, I look around over this church from time to time and I see the works of God in a mighty way. Yeah. Listen, Miss Edie, you mentioned a while ago where some of us have been on death's door. Some of us have had a death sentence. Yeah. But you know what? The God of glory said it ain't time yet. Right. It ain't time yet. I'm only going to wait a few more days right. before you come home. Right. <laughs> in the fullness of time. Right. That's right. When the time is right, but just watch God work. To him be glory and the hanging forever. Starting in verse 1, says, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Oh, this is Paul saying, I know I'm saved. I know I'm a partaker. I believe he read over uh, Romans chapter 8 there a little bit. I believe he knew exactly what he was talking about. He was a child of the king, and he knew about the glory that was going to be revealed one day. I'm glad to know, Brother Martin, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be glorified one day. We'll have a glorified body one of these days. The Lord's going to come back and get us, praise God, and he's going to take us home to be with him forever. And praise God, we'll have a glorified body. We won't have to put up with this old hair and age and fall teeth and wooden legs and all that stuff that we have to deal with. I'm glad to know, praise God. The day is coming. Paul said, Paul said, a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. That glory will be revealed in the last day when the trumpet sounds and the voice of the archangel and the ground's going to burst open and the saints are going to come out and go home and we that remain are going to be caught up in the air with him, praise God, forevermore. That's going to be something. Man, feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that Amen. fadeth not away. Thank you. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Amen. Listen to this. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Whom resist? Steadfast in the faith. There's the one I thought about when I read that. I thought there's a lot of them that don't, stay, don't resist. Steadfast in the faith at all. all right. They don't resist what the devil offers them out there right. every single day. Right. You know what? The devil all, has all kinds of stuff yeah. out there in the world to draw Christians away from serving God. Right. Uh, Roy, Brother Roy said it's pretty good. He said the devil's got that old world looking pretty good out there. Well, I'm going to tell you the devil's got that old world looking pretty good. He's got gambling and he's got immorality and he's got lying and deceit and cheating and thieving and all those things going on out there. And some of those things are inviting even to those that are saved. Yeah. And some of those that profess to be Christians will not deny right. the devil. Right. They don't resist right. the devil. Amen. They allow the devil to get in their life and they allow the devil yes. to get in their homes and they allow yeah. the devil to work in their families. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Praise God, we've got to be careful. The right. devil wants to get in the church. The right. devil wants to get in your home. Right. The devil wants to get in your business. Right. The devil wants to get in your life, praise right. God. And listen, we need to be careful to resist the devil Amen. every day. Right. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a little while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you, Lord, and we bow before you this morning as humble as we know how. 
asking your blessings on us as we go through the remainder of this service this morning. We pray, God, that you'll just fill this house with the Holy Ghost of God, yeah. moving about this place, touching the hearts and the lives of each and every one here. I pray, God, you fill me with the Holy Spirit this morning. Just hold me up and speak through me the words you want said. God, I praise you and thank you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I thought about that. I thought about being a servant and being submitted, submitted to God. Thought about what, what joy and what peace. Listen, I want to tell you, there's not any better place in this world to be. There's no more, no greater comfort in this world than to be right smack dab in the middle of where God wants you to be. I'm going to tell you this morning, if you're not doing what God wants you to do, if you're not in the place where God wants you to be this morning, you'll be miserable throughout the day. If you're not just exactly right where God tells you to be, you're going to be miserable, Brother Bill. I want you to know this morning that the only way that we can have peace and, and, and joy in our lives from day to day with all the things that goes on out there in this old world where we live, the only way that we can have peace and joy in our heart is to be right smack dab in the middle of God's will. Be submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give it over to Him. Be the servant of God. I thought, you know, uh, well, I, I was thinking about when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt. They should have been tickled to death because they got away from old Pharaoh and that heavy hand of persecution that they was facing. But they got out, out, out on the other side, headed for the, for, the, for the Red Sea over there. They got out headed that way, and you know what? They began to grumble and complain. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't be made yeah. happy. They, they said, oh, well, Lord, well, I wish we could you just left us back there to die in Egypt. Yeah. And the Lord said, they said they didn't have nothing to eat. They didn't have water to drink. They had all these problems and all these troubles. You know, it sounded a whole lot like we do sometimes. But you know what? I, I believe that whenever they got out there on the other side, the Lord got hard of hearing all that groaning and complaining. And they didn't, they claimed they didn't have nothing to to give them manna. Manna was a blessing from God. Manna was a good thing. But that wasn't all God wanted for. That's the way we are today, Brother Joe. We'll accept just that little bit. And we'll get out here. We'll become a Christian. And, but we'll get out here and we'll hobnob with the world. And we'll, and we'll forget about what God has really done for us. We'll forget about oh, yeah. that home he's prepared for us. We'll forget about that mansion he's got yeah. for us over on the other side. We'll forget about that stuff and we'll go to complaining because our payday ain't big enough. Or we'll go to complaining because our house is... It's too little. Or we're going to complain about this or complain about that, whining and going on. You know what he'll do? He'll give us manna. He'll give us a little blessing. And he'll tell you, he'll keep us going. But we won't have all he's got in store for us. I want to tell you this morning. Praise God, I can have peace in my heart. I can have joy in my heart. I don't care if this world's falling down around me. I can be happy, praise God. Amen. I can be happy. I can have joy. Right. I can have peace right. knowing that no matter what happens in this world, I've got glory. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning? Right. Praise God, we have glory Amen. to look forward to. There's a lot of Christians out there today that's living on bread and water. It ain't what God wants for them. He wants them to have steak. Right. But they're living on bread and yeah. water. He wants them to have the good stuff. But they... they are remiss mm -hmm. in serving him. They're remiss in having fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. They got a relationship. They got a relationship, but you know what? A relationship without any fellowship is pretty well useless. Mm -hmm. I can be kin to Bill Gates or Donald Trump or what's that guy from Tesla, that other multi-billionaire? Huh? Elon. 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 Yeah, I can be I can be related to them. But if I didn't have any fellowship with them, you know what? They wouldn't know nothing about me. Right? They wouldn't care anything about me. Mm -hmm. But if I got fellowship with them like I got with the Lord, then they care what happens to me. And they take care of me. My God takes care of me. Amen. My God has taken care of me for a long time. Amen. And he's still taking care of me. Amen. He's going to keep on taking care Amen. of me. Amen. Praise God, I'm glad <laughs> that I can know yep. 
that even when this old world jumps on us with both feet and we think we're down and out, all we've got to do is look up. That's right. Look up for your redemption right. drawing nigh. Amen. You know what? I'm glad to know God's looking now. Yeah. And he's listening. Mm -hmm. And he hears whatever is going on in our life every single day. Peter wanted us to know that we could have fellowship with God if we just submit ourselves to him and unto his will. Smack dab in the middle of God's will, that's the best place that I can think of to be. But people who will not, what's that word over there? People who will not uh, uh, cast and resist the devil, people who will not resist the devil, they allow immorality. Uh, they allow immorality, they allow uh, 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 deception, they allow all that stuff uh, to come into their life. You know what? There's no peace. No joy, no comfort without Jesus Christ. No way. There's not any comfort. Then, then, it, then he tells us to have, uh, to be clothed in humility, to have that servant's apron on, yeah. be ready to serve him. Yeah. Listen, we need to recognize the sovereignty of Almighty God. Over there in Daniel, back over in Daniel chapter Three, verse 35, I believe it is, talks about God's sovereignty. He said he controls the armies of heaven and earth. He's in charge of all of it, folks. Listen, I'm going to tell you, this old world, we get to thinking this old world spinning out of control. Yeah. And we get to thinking about how bad everything is yeah. and how awful everything is. We get to thinking about how people are all messed up. And they, they don't, a man don't know he's a man. A woman don't know he's a woman and all that old crazy stuff. Listen, I'm going to tell you, we get to thinking about all that. And it looks like the world's out of control. But you know what, praise God? He's still got his hand on him. It's still sitting right in the same spot he put it in. And it's still rotating on its axis just right. like he made it out to be yeah. at the very beginning. Right. Only thing is, he allows us to be a free agent, I guess is the word. He allows us to choose how we're going to live. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to yeah. know yeah. That. Oh, that we ought to be clothed in humility. We ought to be have that servant's apron on, ready to serve. We ought to have... We ought to have the proper attire. You know, I said a time or two, yeah. when somebody sees me coming down the street, I hope they can look at me and say, there goes a Christian. Yeah. I ought to look like a Christian. Yeah. I ought to talk like one. I ought to act like one. I ought to look, be, look, smell, talk, act, everything like a Christian. Yeah, that's right. Listen, yeah. I ought to have on the proper attire that people know that I am who I am, yeah. that, I, that I serve an almighty God. Listen, I'll have a proper attitude. Yeah. I'll have a proper attire. I'll have a proper <laughs> attitude. I'm going to tell you, there isn't anything in this world any worse than an old grouchy Christian. <laughs> ain't nothing in the world worse. <laughs> you better not say that. I don't want to see you get in. <laughs> ain't nothing in this world worse than an old grouchy Christian. Brother Dan Hutchins used to talk about that with his face as long as a Missouri view. I'm going to tell you, there's some of them out there whose face is as long as a Missouri view. And they're so grouchy that the grass won't grow where they're standing, praise God. I want you to know, there's some of them out there like that. And there's not anything in this world any worse than an old grouchy Christian. If I can't say something good to you when I see you coming, I'll just keep my mouth shut. And I believe that's a pretty good policy. Have the proper attitude and proper affections. Proper affections. Believe God for what he says he is. Believe God's who he says he is. Believe God will do what he says he's going to do. You know what? My affection is based on the shed blood of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. What is that song? Uh, my faith is built on nothing less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less Jesus' blood and righteousness. You know what? We ought to be, we ought to have a proper attitude. We ought to have a proper time. We ought to have the proper affections, realizing that he is who he says he is. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He is who he says he is, and he'll do what he says he'll do. Every single promise that he ever made Amen. to the Old Testament saints, yeah. he has fulfilled. Not a one of them has gone unfulfilled. Uh -huh. And all the promises 
that he's made to the New Testament saints, you and I, we'll be fulfilled. Yeah. Every single one of them. There's not any going to go lacking. They'll all be fulfilled. We need to recognize who he is and, and, and he will do what he says he'll do. Listen, he says down there in verse 5, he says, the casting all your care on him, for he careth for you. Amen. I'm glad to know this morning that this world don't care anything about Calvary Baptist right. Church. This world don't care anything about Brother Steve here. This world don't right. care anything about Brother Robert here. This world don't care anything about any of us. But I'm glad to know, praise God, the God of all glory Amen. is sitting on his throne Amen. looking down this morning Amen. to see if we're where we're supposed Amen. to be. You know what? I think about those that don't ever darken the doors of the church. The God of glory is looking down. He knows about it. You know what? They may fool some of them. They may fool you part of the time. They may fool me all the time, but they won't ever fool God any of the time. That's right. He's not ever fooled. That's right. He always knows. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, oh, Woo. that pain Dale, I know sometimes people get sick and they have to be out of church, and I understand that. Yep. And God knows that too. But I know too many times that people will use any kind of excuse they can think of All right. Right, to stay out of serving God. They can come, they can't come to church because they're going to get COVID. They can go to Walmart and hobnob with everybody in four counties and not worry anything about it. But they can't come to church where there's two or three people there. Four or five. They might get it here. Yeah. 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 They got a hangnail and their little toes hurting and they can't come up to church. You know what? Their little toe won't hurt any worse in here than it does sitting in our We had a man, the railroad, I know I've told this before, but I'm going to tell it again. The railroad had a man, had two men work for the railroad, both of them were laborers. Well, actually, one of them was a backhoe operator, another one was a laborer. And I can't tell you what their names were because y'all don't hold it, Ronnie Pollock and, and Kenny Stevens. They both worked for the railroad, both had the same kind of job, did the same kind of work. Kimmy Stevens, Kimmy Stevens had an ingrown toenail. And it got to hurt his foot, so he went to the doctor and had that ingrown toenail cut out, had his toenail taken off. He was out of work for six months with that, that ingrown toenail. <laughs> Ronnie Pollock was the backhoe operator up at Tullahoma. Ronnie Pollock had a heart attack out on his job. <coughs> going to the hospital, had open heart surgery. Older man at that, about my age. Six weeks. Back work. Back running the back of him. Kimmy Stevens is still out for six months when I didn't drop a toe. Ronnie Pollock came back to work in six weeks with a heart attack and open heart surgery. Now there's something wrong with that picture. <laughs> Yeah. There's something wrong with that picture. And you know what else it is? It's a picture of what we see in a lot of people that call right. themselves Christians. Yeah. Yeah. It's a picture right. of what we see yeah. in a lot of people that call themselves Christians. Be sure, be sure, first of all, be sure that you're where you're supposed to be with God. Be, but be sure your sins will find you out. That's right. My God sitting in glory, looking back. And he sees those that profess to be Christians. He sees those who maybe are Christians, and they're just lazy. I believe there is. I believe there's a lot of Christians. They are Christians, and they'll go to heaven one day. But there won't be any reward. There won't be any crown. There won't be anything for them. It'll be a fire escape. The Bible talks about that, making it just be a fire escape. Yeah. I believe there's a lot of people out there that are really are Christians, but they're lazy as all get out and will not serve right. the God of glory because they've allowed the devil to get in their life and in their home and in their family and cause them to be backslidden. And I believe there is such a thing as a backslidden Christian. But we need to be sure. In, uh, in Luke in chapter 19, verse 35, I wrote that down for, but I had it for a reason. It was there for some reason. 
completely. We need to oh, be surrendered completely. Give him all our care. That's right. Be ready. Be confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's right. So those who are out there without faith, those who lack faith, those who are not where they ought to be with God, guess what? They not, they're that way because they're not in the right. word of God. If you see a Christian or a so-called Christian and he's living in the world and he's not in the word of God, right. you won't ever see him darken the doors of the church. You won't ever see him pray. You won't ever see him pick up the Bible because he's backstabbed. Back out of the world, he's allowing the devil yeah. to do what, allowing the devil to do what the devil wants to do. And then uh, uh, verse, uh, verse, 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 be sober. Verse eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is the devil as a roaring lion. I thought about being serious. I thought, you know, uh, the devil's real. I don't know how many people will tell you. Uh, they don't believe any such thing as heaven or hell. They don't believe any such thing as the devil and God. They'll tell you that that's just that we're just like old dogs and we're going to live here and, and we're going to die and be kicked over the side. I'm going to tell you, the devil's real. God is real. The church is real. Heaven is real. And you better be sober. You better be ready. You better be looking. Looking for it. Be serious about serving God. The devil's real. The Bible says the thief cometh but to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. And what he's here. And he'll come in your in your home, in your house, in your in your church. He'll come in this church if we allow him to come into the church. If we allow him to come into our lives, he'll come into our lives. He'll convince you that because the world says it's okay, it's okay. I gotta get that. Because the world says it's okay, he'll convince you because the world says it's okay, it's okay. He'll convince you because they legislated. Yeah. It's now legal to do yeah. this thing. It, can, it don't matter what it is. If it's murder, if they make it legal, praise God, it's still the same in the eyes of God. Amen. He says it was the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's not ever going to change his Amen. mind. God's not going to change his mind. God has changed his mind a time or two, but he's not going to change his mind about that. He didn't ever change his mind about the law or any of the commandments. He didn't ever change his mind about any of the principles or any of the precepts that he set down for us to live by, he's never changed his mind about any of those things. God did change his mind about punishing evil, punishing Israel a time or two, but he never changes his mind about the principles and the precepts and the commandments that he has for us. He'll never change his mind about those things. We need to be sober. We need to be ready. We need to be looking. And listen, he said, be vigilant. Vigilant. That word vigilant means to be busy about God's business. Busy about God's business. You know what? It's awful easy. For the moment, it's awful easy for us to get up and come to church on Sunday morning, one hour on Sunday morning. Hey, that don't, that's awful easy for about everybody to do. Even though, some, even though you see all these empty seats, that's easy to do. But it's not hardly as easy to go out there in the world and be vigilant about serving God. Be busy about telling them about Jesus Christ. Be busy about showing them Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. That's not as easy. That's why he said be vigilant about it. Right. If it had been real easy, Steve, he wouldn't even mention it. Right. He said just don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. But he said be vigilant. Be busy about serving God. I'm two more now, I'm, but I'm going to quit. We'll, we'll, we'll finish that way. Somehow. Stand with me this minute. But no more, I'll tell you the first uh, song. Might be somebody here this morning needs to do business with the Lord. Don't think you've got to be lost. Don't think you've got to be steeped in sin. You know what? We need to do business.